high rise buildings are very popular in today's construction industry in high rise building we require vertical transportation between floor to floors not only in high rise building even if we have buildings with more than 3 floors we require vertical transportation between floor to floor because it is very difficult for people to move from one floor to another floor by using the staircase as we all know that lift or elevator plays a major important role in buildings for people to move from one floor to another floor it also helps to move the goods or materials from floor to floor these lift or elevators offer an ease and convenience for people to move from one floor to another floor it also makes the life easier for physically handicapped persons however the planning of the lift or elevator mainly depends on the architect but it is the responsibility of the structural engineers to provide all the structural requirements for lift while framing of the structure hey friends well Welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. In this video, we are going to discuss about the structural requirements for lift wall and lift pit, as well as the operation mechanism of lift. How does the lift work, and what are all the types of lifts available? So, without further delay, let's begin now. First things first, let's start off with the general arrangements of lift. Here we have the plan of the lift. In section we have three parts. You have to understand this clearly. On the top of the lift we have the lift machine room, and then in the middle lift car will be running through floor to floor, and at the bottom will be having the lift pit. We have lift machine room at the top, and in the middle we have lift car which will be running through floor to floor in the lift shaft, and then at the bottom we have lift pit. This is the place where your floor starts. So in this place we need to provide the lift pit because the lift car will be having some of the mechanical system under it. So when it reaches the lower floor, it needs some space to occupy that mechanical system under the lift car. Hence we need to provide the lift pit. At the bottom the depth of the lift fit always depends on the type of the lift and the brand of the lift that will be specified in the manufacturer's catalog we need to make sure that this lift fit needs to be waterproof because a leaking fit can cause a lot of problems since the lift car is having many mechanical system and electrical system underneath it and this lift fit needs to be constructed as a rcc structure these elevators are operated as like the pulley system which we use Used in olden days to draw water from the well. In pulley system, we operate manually to draw the water from the well. But here in elevators, we use electrical motors to lift the load. Here you have the car which will be running through floor to floor. This is your landing level, and then there will be a guide rail which is helping to move the lift car from floor to floor. And you will be having the counter weight. As we have discussed in the beginning, there will be some mechanical system under the lift car that needs some buffer. space when the lift car reaches the ground floor level let's look into the types of elevators based on the function we have passenger elevator goods elevator and service elevator based on the working mechanism we have traction elevator which is this one In this you will be having the lift machine room lift car and then lift pit next one is hydraulic elevator and then vacuum elevator and mrl elevator mrl elevator is machine room less elevator so in this type of elevators we will not be having lift machine room for any repair work or maintenance work the unit needs to be accessed from top of the elevator cab let's look into the lift plan we have two lifts here the structural arrangement is provided in such a way that the columns are the supporting elements for the lift here we are not providing the shear wall the columns are the supporting elements So these walls are the masonry walls from the finished floor level so below finished floor level as we have discussed in the beginning we need to provide the lift pit so the lift pit walls needs to be an rcc walls only so above that we can take the masonry wall let's look into the section so that you will get the clear idea see here we have the excavation plan in excavation plan see for all these six columns together we have taken as a combined it's a kind of raft one so this is cf3 cf3 is combined 
provide footing three for all the six columns and in between we have the walls let's look into the section here we have the planet section for combined footing three see from the finished floor level the depth of the foundation is 2500 mm as we have discussed in the beginning even we need to provide more depth for the lift pit according to the specifications of the type of lift and brand of the lift so here from the finished floor level we have taken the foundation depth as 2500 mm we are providing the reinforcement as a mat top reinforcement as well as bottom reinforcement so in this only we can take the lift pit walls from this mat reinforcement we can take the lift pit wall and then that needs to be provided till this finished floor level so after that we can take the masonry wall for the lift shaft this is the mat reinforcement for the lift pit as well as the foundation you can see this is the finished floor level so from this level the lift pit wall needs to be a rcc wall and then it it should be watertight now let's look into the structural requirement of the lift pit the lift pit must be strong enough to support the weight of the lift car counterweight and passengers the lift pit must be watertight so this is to prevent the water from seeping into the pit and damaging the electrical and mechanical components of the lift so the pit walls and floor should be made of waterproof concrete the lift pit must be accessible for maintenance and repair there must be a way to get into the pit without having to disassemble the lift for the maintenance purpose the lift pit must be easily accessible the minimum depth of the lift pit it must be 1500 mm that is 1.5 meter this may vary depending on the type of the lift and brand of the lift in addition to these requirements we need to use high quality of material that are resistant to corrosion and moisture and we have to make sure that pit is properly aligned with the lift shaft lift pit needs to be properly aligned with the lift shaft and we have to inspect the pit regularly for the signs of wear and tear and if any repair or damage is there that needs to be addressed immediately next let's move on to lift walls as you can see in this image this is the lift wall this is your finished floor level so from this you can take the masonry wall in case of earthquake prone areas where you need to provide the shear walls in that case you can continue the lift pit concrete wall as the lift walls in each floor the proper opening needs to be provided let's look into the structural requirement of the lift wall first one is strength the lift wall must be strong enough to support the weight of the lift passengers and any other load that may apply to them because when the lift car is moving up and down the lift wall needs to be strong enough to withstand the vibration of it because all the loads will be moving up and down so the lift wall must be strong enough to withstand it and it needs to provide the fire resistant to protect the occupants of the building from fire the lift wall must provide sound insulation relation to reduce noise from the lift traveling up and down the shaft the lift wall must be durable and also it needs to withstand the wear and tear of everyday usage because we will be using the lift on a daily basis so it needs to withstand the wear and tear next one is thickness of the lift wall the thickness of the lift lift wall will be depend on the height of the building and the loads that they are expected to carry in general minimum of 150 thickness needs to be provided in case of rc wall in case of masonry wall 200 or 230 mm is the minimum thickness for the lift walls so the structural design of the lift wall is a little bit complex process that must be carried out by the structural engineer carefully so engineer needs to consider all the factors which we have discussed as well as the specific requirements of the building and the local building codes nbc 2016 that is national building code of india in that we have a separate section for this uh, lift provisions so we need to refer the code and then we need to design the lift components very carefully i have the lift catalog in this the section view is given see here machine room and then in each floor level we will be having the and the traveling height of the lift car is given here and pd is minimum pit depth lift pit depth this is the finished floor level in the catalog all the details will be given see planning guide for dimensions that is deep car dimensions are given so according to the capacity and the load we need to choose the car size and then dimensions width of the car 
we need to choose according to this here we have planning guide for dimension oh and pit the speed is given maximum travel standard oh minimum oh and then here we have the standard pit standard pit dimensions and the minimum pit dimensions this is the depth of the pit so friends i hope you like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome if you really like the content hit the like button and also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching